Today, we're going to talk about something that's been in the press, um, specifically a new article that came out about fish oil supplements and the risk of stroke and heart issues. So Dr. Sears, I'm going to pass it over to you. But the, the first question here is, do omega-3s cause, in this study, they talked about AFib, and I know this is something that has come up recently in the news too, but do omega-3s cause AFib? The answer is no. <laughs> now, uh, now, I make that answer because we have omega-3 fatty acids in our diet, and we can measure them in the blood. And we have many long-term studies that indicate the higher the levels of omega-3 fatty acids you have in your blood, the lower the levels of AFib. So we have to ask the question, say, okay, next question. Might fish oil supplements cause AFib? I think the answer is maybe. Now, I'll put that why we put maybe. That study you just mentioned early on, uh, okay. saying it was, to be quite pathetic. It was a study How saying- How do you really feel about it? <laughs> <laughs> it? It asked people, say, have you taken a fish oil supplement, yes or no? It didn't say how much or uh, how often, uh, but nor did they ever measure the blood. So mm -hmm. they're saying, yes, I take a fish oil supplement. But that really means nothing. That's not science. That's basically of like an opinion poll. Uh, so the data there was not very uh, suggestive uh, because one of the things you have to do is saying, uh, do we have any studies that actually measure the blood? And so now we do. Uh, and one study says if you use low levels of fish oil supplements, there's no evidence of AFib. Good news. Mm -hmm. Bad news, no cardiovascular benefits. So why are you taking them? It's a waste of time because you weren't raising the blood levels high enough to have any benefit. Now, other studies, depending on the type of supplement used, can show either no effects or significant effects on AFib and at higher levels. So we have to kind of look a little deeper into that. And here we go into the um, uh, aspects of fish oil quality. Uh, mm -hmm. These two studies were using pharmaceutical uh, products at high doses, about four grams of omega-3 fatty acids per day. Uh, one study uh, was using free fatty acids. They, they saw AFib increased, and they saw no benefits in terms of uh, cardiovascular benefits. So, well, geez, that's, that's just, don't take high levels of omega-3 fatty acids. The other study used only EPA by itself. Uh, they saw an increase in AFib, but they saw a significant Im improvement in cardiovascular. To so say, what should I do? You know, I say, I don't want to have uh, AFib, but AFib is not heart disease. AFib is simply a ventriculation that basically your heart is not in total rhythm. However, what our most important thing is not getting heart disease. And if you have heart disease, not dying from heart disease. So those are more important aspects. And one thing, Dr. Sears, I was just, and not to, not to cut you off, I was just thinking that maybe some people that are listening aren't really sure what exactly a, AFib is. So do you mind just briefly just going through what AFib is in the connection with the heart? Well, your, your heart is a chamber that kind of pumps, pumps blood. And so as, as an inner rhythm, it's say it pumps it through the system. Uh, AFib is really basically the upper part of the chamber just isn't basically in rhythm. So uh, it isn't pumping as effectively. So there's a possibility of the blood coagulating and possibly causing a clot. Mm -hmm. Well, here's one of the things about uh, fish oils. They reduce clot formation. So you can have AFib, but AFib is not a problem. It's only a problem if it causes the clot. So that's why I think you get this now, this uh, equivocal aspect of saying it doesn't basically have any benefits in reducing heart attack and most importantly, reducing mortality. Mm -hmm. So we go back to those studies and now I have to look at the fat, at the, uh, the fish oils used. One study used free fatty acids, which are incredibly prone to oxidation. Uh, and that's going to cause lots of problems. It caused AFib, and it caused no benefits uh, with the studies. The other one, uh, there were some benefits, but it caused some AFib. Now, but that was all EPA. Now, we, th we also now say when you have these high levels of omega-3 fatty acids, really high concentrations, how you get them, that's the, usually the problem because you have to concentrate the omega-3 fatty acids to higher and higher dosages 
under conditions of what is called a molecular distillation. Very high temperature. And at those temperatures, the omega-3 fatty acids can now isomerize in space. They're still omega-3 fatty acids, but they no longer have the right spatial configuration. And now they are turned from pronutrients to anti-nutrients because now they can either bind to receptors for the real uh, key players called resolvents or basically not be able to made into resolvents. And that's why the uh, using the high omega-3 fatty acid ones, the data is quite clear, they reduce resolvent formation. So we're left with a dilemma. Uh, first of all, don't believe anything unless you see there's any blood testing with it. Guessing is not, it, guessing is good for elections, but not very good for science. So first of all, you have to look at the blood levels and say, okay, what people have the lowest rates of heart disease mortality in the world? The Japanese. The Japanese. Mm -hmm. uh, now, what population smokes like chimneys? The <laughs> Japanese. So, well, I don't get it. Uh, Smoking is bad for heart, and yet the Japanese smoke like chimneys, and they have very little heart disease because they have high levels of omega-3 fatty acids in their blood. So we want to be looking at taking this, these grains of salt. You usually get bad science gets great press results. So our goal is saying what we want to do is try to get your levels of omega-3 fatty acids in your blood to be near the levels of the Japanese. Uh, with the American diet is not going to cut it. So you're going to have to use supplementation. But now use supplementation of using basically fish oils that are not basically isomerized or in forms like free fatty acids that cause problems. And now that's how you basically go about reducing the primary cause of death in the United States, which is heart disease. So again, uh, we have these little, uh, often, oftentimes poorly conducted studies, and then they get great press and they say, oh my God, the sky is falling. Stop chicken little. It's not falling. R read between the lines. Mm -hmm. Well, and it's very hard to be educated about these studies that come out. So just to, to summarize what you said, Dr. Sears, the study that recently came out was looking at associations. They didn't look at blood levels of omega-3s, the amount people were taking, or the quality of the oil. And then there's other studies that have shown a mild association between AFib and fish oil, but in that study, it was related to the free fatty acids, correct? Free fatty acids, and also basically trying to get the very high concentrations of EPA, not mm -hmm. because that was good, they need that for the patent position. Mm -hmm. So the long, to get the higher concentrations, you have to expose it to high heat for a longer period of time. And anybody who's been in a kitchen says that usually makes a bad meal. Mm -hmm. So if somebody is taking fish oil currently, what would you, you, you wouldn't tell them to clearly stop taking their supplementation, but what would you tell them to be looking for so they're educated about what they're using? Well, first of all, get a good quality fish oil. <laughs> and this contains both EPA and uh, DHA. Uh, two, make sure it's pure. <laughs> and, and the fish oil market is buyer beware. Uh, and that's why that we you know, say, show me the data that every lot you're making is suitable for human consumption, a great majority or not. And finally, measure your blood. That's what you're looking at. It's like saying taking a statin drug. Doc, how much statin should I take? I don't know. Just take, you know, whatever you want to. No, you take it until you bring your cholesterol level into an appropriate zone. The same is true of fish oil. You want to bring your, your uh, take enough fish oil, if it's good quality fish oil and not overly processed, to bring it into an appropriate therapeutic zone. What's a good choice? How about the Japanese? You know, uh, and don't smoke. Then, then you've got the best of all possible worlds. Mm -hmm. And Excellent. how do you know? Look for the ratio of a rocketonic acid EPA. Mm -hmm. Keep that between 1.5 and 3. You're going to live a long life. Dr. Sears, if people want to learn more about this or even just omega-3s and the appropriate levels for the blood, where should they go to learn more information? Well, our, our primary information source is drsears.com. We try to give you basically the insights and the guidance so you can come to an intelligent decision mm -hmm. as opposed to one being driven by the press and usually basically the popular press. <laughs> Sounds good. Well, thanks so much for breaking down the science and the research, Dr. Sears. We appreciate your time today. For more on this topic and many others on the science of wellness, go to drsears.com. 
The views, thoughts, and opinions expressed on this podcast are the speaker's own and do not represent the views, thoughts, and opinions of Zone Enterprises or any of its affiliates. The material and information presented here are for informational purposes only. None of the views, thoughts, and opinions expressed are medical advice. For medical advice, you should consult your doctor or other medical professionals.